Prince, I had to do it, and I gotta start by saying I don't regret it. In this video, we're gonna be talking all about the Great Barrier by Redback Boot Company. Friends, if you're just joining us, consider subscribing to The Gentleman's Journey for more videos around boots, guy stuff, and videos just like this. So we're gonna be covering the fit, the sizing, the care instructions, the construction, the build quality, and much more. And hang in for the end as we're gonna take these out on a short adventure. Let's get into it. Now I've been on the hunt for a good Chelsea boot for quite some time and this boot comes to me with a ton of recommendations and even a few requests for me to review. So guys, I actually went with the Blundstone boot first and though this isn't a comparison video, I just gotta say that I tried it, I didn't like it, I sent it back. I'll put that link to that video right here and you can find it in the description below. But moving on, let's get into this boot. So friends, I went with the Great Barrier. There's another option for 100 and I think 45 at the time I'm making this video. This was 175. And so I'm doing a lot of boots right now for you guys and for myself that are in that, you know, under 200 price range, which is quite hard to believe these days. Everything seems to be skyrocketing up and to get a boot for under 200 bucks, the boast, what Redback boasts, just sounds like a killer deal. So we're gonna start by talking about the upper. So the upper is made of full grain leather. And guys, this is water resistant, uh, heat resistant. It's even kind of like a muck boot for me. It's a six inch boot. And so it gives you a little bit of room for stuff to splash up. And they kind of talk about the stitching. You'll see a V pattern on the front. And so they're saying that it causes them to have less stitching and actually give you more room around the boot to keep one solid piece of leather so i think it's a bit of a design thing really but i think it looks fantastic uh i do wear my boots down a lot i don't cuff them as much obviously in australia you got guys wearing these with shorts i might give that a try and see how guys over here in america look at me but you know what i think it's just a really clean looking boot from the top. So friends, with this full grain leather, they say it's chrome tanned, and that's a newer process than the oil vegetable tan. And if you want more on that, I'm gonna send you guys over to Stridewise. Check out this video here. He goes into great detail. I think it's worth your time after, of course, this video. So they're saying that this leather is thicker than their competitors. With Redback, you're getting 2.5 millimeters to 2.7, where with the competitors, you're getting 2.4 to 2.6. So it is noticeably thick leather, and I feel like it's gonna handle what I give to it. Also should be noted, this boot does come in a steel toe version. I don't have that, that's not what I'm wanting for this boot, but just know you can get that if that's what's gonna suit your need. Next, I wanna talk about the midsole and the outsole. The reason being is because, in my opinion, the way I wanna describe it, is they're actually one and the same. And so this is a really neat process. Uh, to the layman, let's just say it's kinda like a tennis shoe, but I wanna go into more detail so we don't stop there. Now, friends, the outsole is super aggressive. Uh, it has an awesome tread pattern. Really what I'm looking for, uh, I'm keen to find out if, it, if it's gonna get rocks stuck in it, kinda like the Vibram or Vibram lug outsole. Now this company's really got a good connection with the tradies, as you'll hear in Ozzy. Or in America, it's the tradesmen. So this boot, it's slip resistant, it's oil resistant, it handles a certain amount of temperature on the, on the bottom, and so you can get into all kinds of different trouble, and this boot's gonna get you out of it, which is kinda surprising for a boot under 200, but uh, they're really, the, with the steel toes and just different lines they have, lots of mechanics and guys like that wear these, and so it really makes a good tradesman boot. But a little more about the way this is put together with the midsole. So the way they describe it on the website is, it's an atomic sole, and so the way they do that is the sole is actually mended to the upper by getting molten hot and then press on. And so it's not glues, it's not screws, but it actually becomes one and wholly perfect matrimony for the rest of its life. So guys, this isn't like a 360 degree Goodyear welt where you're gonna be getting it stitched back on or something like that. Uh, but 
the process is not like a shoe. So let me eat my words and say it's not like a shoe because the shoe is always just glued on. You know, they got a factory, they glued on. A couple months later, you'll see the toe popping off and stuff like that because that glue only lasts so long and under weather and under different environments. And if you go running with them, it's gonna start coming loose. And of course, if they're using cheap glue, that's gonna happen. But guys, this is like a molten process that is just out of sight. And so Redback has their own thing going on there and I had a really fun time learning more about that. Redback, if you're watching, guys, hey, what about sending me over to the factory? I'll bring my camera. We'll check out how that outsole is mended to the midsole. We'll get it on film and show these guys. So yeah, let's chat. But friends, there's so much more to talk about with this outsole midsole situation they got going on. Now Redback says that they teamed up with some podiatrists to actually make a footbed that's good for your legs, for your knees, and for your back. And so I don't know about you, but I want boots that are working for me and not against me. So that was one of the big draws to this boot for me, is that they took some real thought into it. And with that guys, it can handle acids and oils and temperatures up to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. So these guys, like I said, are gonna get you out of some trouble that you find yourselves in. Due to the midsole being made of polyurethane, it can actually get you into the situation called hydrolysis. Now what that is, is basically this sole is made of little tiny molecules. And if you're not using that, if you're not creating energy in that by moving it, by walking on it, it's actually able to break down that polyurethane. And so guys, the antidote you ask, it's simple. Just use your boots. Now friends, I have a growing boot collection. If you haven't checked my 2020 boot video here, I'm so excited about my 2021 boot video. These guys are gonna be in it. We've already added a few. But guys, I have the tendency, because my boot collection is growing, to put some on the back shelf and I just don't get to them. But don't let that happen to you. Just wear them and you'll be fine. I don't know if you wanna nerd out like I do, but I always check out the websites learn up and I'm researching on this stuff. Uh, there's all kinds of information that I haven't covered even here about the midsole and the outsole. But friends with some thick leather like this, an amazing outsole and a midsole that's actually made by podiatrists to make your back and legs work better. Guys, that's what draw me to this brand. And so I'm excited to put these on and get out there and get them on some adventure. Friends, as I try these on, I wanna talk about sizing. Because unless you're going bespoke and you get someone to make your boots for you, you're probably getting your boots off the shelf. So sizing is gonna be one of the most important things. And in these red backs, I actually went with a 10 and a half UK, which makes it 11 and a half US. So I actually wear a size 12 in tennis shoes. And so I'm following that good old uh, rule of thumb with boots which is to size half a size down from your tennis shoe. So that puts me from a 12 to 11 and a half. And then of course, converting it to UK, because these are, this is an Aussie brand, so they're using the UK standard, and it gets me into a 10 and a half. And so guys, and with the Blundstones, I actually ordered the 11 UK, which is a 12 US, because I did a bunch of research and that's where it led me. And I really felt like that was the right decision and they were just too big. And so with my Thursdays and with my Red Wings, I always do that half size down and it's never let me down. So I'm pretty excited about how these fit. Guys, let me know in the comments if you've had a bad experience or if you've had a good experience. Maybe guys in the comments could learn a little bit from uh, whatever life experience you have with sizing. Uh, have you been to a store and got measured? Have you done bespoke boots? Uh, somewhere like NYX or something. I'd love to hear about that in the comments below because you know we none of us want to wait for Amazon to get our return or the Red Wing or Redback to get our return and that whole process of them coming back to us is just so ah uh, if you're impatient like I am that's a bummer and so I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. Friends, we got the sizing right, and now I'm keen to see how they handle the real world, so let's take them out on an adventure.
Guys, how good was that? My dog usually steals the show, but we had a fun little trip and I can't wait to see how many more adventures these guys take me on. So friends, before we get into my thoughts on these boots, real quick, I wanted to talk about the care instructions. So let's bring out some of the stuff that I use. You always need a good horsehair brush. So make sure and have that. Guys, if you're this far into it and you don't have one yet, make sure and get you one. I'll drop a link to a good one down in the description below. Next up, let's talk about how to condition them. So what do I recommend? Guys, they always say just go with what the manufacturer says. So of course, Redback has their own products. I highly recommend when you guys place your order for some of these boots, just add that into your cart as well. You can't go wrong with what the manufacturer, like with my Red Wings, right now I'm rocking their stuff. I don't do that across the board. That's why we're gonna talk about a few more products. Quickly, one that I don't recommend, that's the mink oil. Now guys, these are dark, dark boots. So you're not gonna darken them anymore, but it's just the stuff that's in here I don't recommend on most any boots. I have a set of work boots. I don't even care that much about them. I run this stuff because I'm trying to get all the protection I can. I'm gonna beat the heck out of them and just see what happens. Kind of an experiment, kind of because I want that extra protection. Unless you're really traipsing around through water and mud every day, I would just stay away from the mink oil. Uh, Venetian shoe cream, that's one that you just can't lose with. Uh, I run these on all kinds of different boots. So Venetian shoe cream, I have the medium brown, but you can go with the natural, just the clear color, and that works good on all your boots. And then the Saphir leather greasy cream. Guys, I love this stuff. I can't speak highly enough about it. I think it would go really well on there. And that's actually what I might do on mine. Another one that I don't have is the Black Rock. Now guys, I sat down with a cobbler. If you haven't seen that video, I just know you're gonna love it. I'll put a link right here and make sure and drop it in the description as well. Guys, the cobbler said that's some of the stuff that he loves the most. So if I were you, I would get a can of that today and try it out on some of your different leathers. I just think it's gonna be a good one. Now another one that he talked about and I keep hearing all the time is the Big Four Leather Conditioner. Guys, this stuff is supposed to be the bee's knees and I gotta get my hands on some. I don't know why I haven't yet, I just need to throw some in my shopping cart and pull the trigger, but I'm actually kinda debating on just running all Black Rock or all Big Four on these guys. So if you don't know, I have a sociology degree. Something about sociologists is we like to study stuff. So that's why like on the Red Wings, I'm just running their products uh, and I'm gonna keep that through the whole course. Some of the others now I've got off and I've mixed and matched and stuff. But I think with these, I'm just gonna do that. Again, I'm gonna stick with one and just see how I like the conditioner. Of course, that's gonna change because it's a different type of leather. So this is obviously a different process than Red Wing or Thursday Boots would be, but I still think you can learn a lot by just sticking with one polish, one conditioner and seeing how that goes. All right, so now you know how to clean and condition your boots. Uh, well, I guess the cleaning part, friends, I would say people are just hitting me hard left and right on saddle soap. So I guess that's the thing of the past. Get yourself some leather cleaner. You know, Cobbler's Choice has some leather cleaner that's supposed to be out of sight. So, hey, if you wanna clean them, feel free to use that saddle soap. But if you wanna take a step further, grab you some Cobbler's Choice leather cleaner and I think you're gonna be really happy with that. So my review. Now guys, I've had these a few weeks. I've been enjoying them. I think they are as comfortable as a boot could possibly be. I think the grips are out of sight. I really, really feel confident when I'm walking on different surfaces. Uh, again, with the stitching and the way they've developed this, it really is one good, nice piece of leather across the front. I think it's gonna perform really well in wet conditions. Uh, they pull on easy. That's exactly what I was looking for because I've told you guys in the past, when it comes to my everyday routine, I'm a bit lazy. So I'm the type of guy that always will at least have speed hooks at the top if it's laced up. But if I could get a slip on and make that my daily running gun, I'm gonna do it. So having tried the Blendstones and headed over here to Redback, I couldn't be happier. There's not a lot of cons, I'll just be honest with you guys. I'm not paid by Redback or anything like that. This is my opinion. 
The only con I can find at this point is I don't like spiders. So guys, you know, if you're a guy that doesn't like spiders like I do, and I'm all, I'm joking, but friends, there's not much at this point in time. The quality control has been on point. I haven't found any loose stitching. Uh, I've already told you about the process, how they mold the outsole to the midsole, and that's not coming loose at all. I'm gonna come back to these like I do my other boots in six months to a year and tell you how they're performing. So this is kind of an out of the box, couple week thing, but I'm really excited with this brand and I'm really proud to own a pair. So guys, that's what we're doing over here at The Gentleman's Journey. I sure hope you liked this video. Hope you got something from it. If you would, just drop us a comment. I'd love to see what kind of boots you're rocking today. Tell me if you liked the video, something you know about the brand that I didn't cover. We just love to hear from you guys. So if you made it this far into the video and you haven't subscribed, hey, it would mean the world to us if you consider subscribing and hit that little bell. Next time we put out a video about Redbacks or Red Wings or any other of the Reds, you're gonna get notified. We got some Thursday boots on the brain as always. We got some Red Wings that we're looking at. Guys, there's just a ton of stuff. I'm traveling, so I'm looking in to maybe Tekovas, if I'm even saying that right, Tekova. And I'm looking into even Nicks and Whites, so we might step it up a notch as we go along this journey. But hey, this is my journey. Thanks so much for coming. God bless you, and we'll see you in the next one.